My boss is a tuck your shirt and Nazi, among other things. So I found a loophole in the dress code where I don't have to tuck in my shirt. What things have you done by the book just to pee off your boss? My brother-in-law worked for UPS for 17 years. He was a bit of a joker and was constantly getting in trouble for coming to work with crazy hair colors, or cornrows. He was a big Italian guy and was told it wasn't appropriate. It was always something. But they couldn't say anything about him wearing sunglasses. So his little rebellion was he would wear the most outrageous sunglasses he could think of. Ones shaped like giant red lips, guitars with the stems sticking up, purple ones with rhinestone hearts on them, anything for a laugh. After a while people knew him by his glasses. If someone said they lived in a certain area I would say, oh my brother-in-law is your UPS man, the guy with the crazy glasses, and their reply would almost always be something like, ooh or John, yeah I love that guy, he's hilarious, he passed away 4 years ago, he was hit by a drunk driver while he was out walking one night. When we attended his funeral all of the guys from work came dressed in their browns with crazy sunglasses on. His best friend gave his eulogy wearing a pair of nim green glasses three times the size of his face and the pastor even borrowed John's guitar glasses when he went up to speak. After his funeral we counted, he had over 200 different pairs. What started as him being a pain in the butt to his boss ended as a tribute to his character in life of always wanting to make someone else smile. A couple of friends of mine work at Walmart. They found out that kilts are well within the dress code as long as they are the correct color. Drove their managers nuts. It's been a year and absolutely no problems though. While I was in the navy it was recommended that I get a extensive surgery on my ankle. My command felt that I didn't deserve a bunch of time off for a surgery so they said they would approve it but none of the convalescent leave. They refused to sign any paperwork. First thing I did was hit them with the regulation stating that they were required to respond to all requests within a certain amount of time. Three days I think. They responded with a no. So then I had Navy legal draw up paperwork, with accordance to regulations, that my command would be responsible for 100% of my medical care if they did not abide by doctor's orders. I then let them know that would mean that all of my medical care would then be handled by civilians and the command would be responsible for paying the bill out of their budget. They approved my surgery, convalescent leave, and convalescent leave extension. I used to work for this small town, twice weekly newspaper, the editor publisher, mayor, county commissioner and a few other people were skimming tax dollars. When I confronted my boss about it. He told me he'd blackball me if I said anything. So I went to the local television station, tipped them off and they uncovered the story. When they won their awards, my name was added to the list of reporters. I still can't get a job as a journalist, but dang if it didn't feel good. Small town politics. Also wouldn't the blackball be limited to that county? No one outside should care about a small town mayor and cronies. Used to work at a TV station. Absolutely awful management and horrible bosses. Complained about it to friends all the time. Some would even ask me on Facebook about my job and I would reply but I knew I could get fired for speaking ill of the company. So I read the HR handbook and found out as long as I don't specifically name the company, I can't be fired for it. So, about a month later, I realize I can't take this crap anymore and post on Facebook how terrible my job is, never mentioning the company by name. They fire me a day later. I gladly walk out of that building and into a lawyer's office got $17,800 my yearly salary. Seriously. It feels good man. Worked in one corporate kitchen where our GM didn't like our music so he would put on children's music. So we all started singing along at the top of our lungs. We won that war of attrition. Years later in another kitchen we had surround sound in a closed kitchen where the upper TGM did not like our music and started passing draconian censorship rules about the music. So we switched it to children's music for a week. Moral of the story never underestimate the power of a kitchen crew of misfits singing banana phone at the top of their lungs to fight fascism. Mother. Viva Larafi. Viva Larafi. Ring ring ring. Banana phone. Not so much a tuck-in shirt Nazi situation, but here goes. 
My boss went away for about 3-4 weeks for a conference, and while he was away, a workmate and I had an idea, a George Foreman grill, and then we'd go to the deli and grab stuff for lunch, hamburgers, lamb chops, pork, steaks etc. We did this every day for over a month, and when the boss got back he put a stop to it, with the exact words I don't want that thing inside the office. So we took it to the shared kitchen area on our floor, we rented a suite, when he got angry at that, and said I don't want IT on this floor, we took it down to the underground parking area and used the power outlet at his parking space while he was out at lunch. He caught us because he was coming back from lunch with a business partner, in the car with him, and we were hunched over a tiny George Foreman grill making hamburger patties. Imagine three IT guys, crouching on the ground like cavemen, in a poorly lit underground parking lot, cooking hamburger on the concrete floor. Yeah, it went over about as well as you would think. If he didn't specifically use the words take that home or I will break it and throw it in the trash our next step was to use the power point in the parking lot of the church directly opposite the building, and facing his office. You should have found out where he lived, then pay the people across the street to let you run an extension cord out of their front door, hook it to the GF grill, and chill on the sidewalk while staring at his house. Back when I was working and attending classes I would go straight from campus to work, getting me there anywhere from 10-20 minutes early before my shift. On a cash and my boss would ask me to help him out with something before I clock on, putting something away or answering the phone. Over the span of a couple months, this evolved from occasionally to every day your shift starts when you get here. After doing this for a couple weeks, still clocking in at my usual 3pm, I decide that if I'm working for a few extra minutes each day, I'm gonna get paid for it. I did this once, and I didn't make it an hour into my shift before my boss is screaming at me and throwing down the employee handbook saying that I'm only allowed to clock in 5 minutes before and after my scheduled shift. Needless to say, I made it a point to not check in until 5 minutes after my scheduled shift every day, no matter how early I was. Fast forward 3 months and my boss gets fired. He got what was coming to him. It is in fact illegal for your employer to fail to pay you for doing any sort of work for them under the Fair Labor Standards Act, whether it's part of your normally assigned duties or not. Not my story, but a co-worker, worked at a water park. Supervisor was a bee who wouldn't let the lead guards at the top of the tallest slide in the park go to the bathroom. Guard at the top is radio eyeing that he needs to take a crap, but she won't let him, mind you. The lead guards are allowed to ride down every once in a while to make sure no tubes are stuck. Lead guard is about to crap his pants in front of a ton of guests, so he goes into the utility closet and shoots in a bucket of cat litter we kept to clean up vomit. He then proceeds to ride the slide down to clean himself off and left the supervisor to clean up his bucket of crap. My father was working in a post office in the early 80s. It was an unusually hot day with 85 degrees Fahrenheit inside. There were no fans available so it was crazy. Men weren't allowed to wear shorts, but dad came to work wearing shorts which covered his knees and a part of his shin. Figuring he was fine, he wasn't, and his boss sent him home to change. He returned in his grandfather's borju from the late 19th century, top hat and all. The boss kept asking if it wasn't a little hot in that suit but he said he was fine. That is a man I can respect, I just love opportunities to overdress. For example I went to a job interview for a dishwasher in a full suit with a sweater vest and knit tie on. Not work but school. I'm a senior in high school, and one day a bunch of senior guys decided to start up tank top Tuesday every Tuesday about one stroke to the senior guys would come to school in a tank top. Our school had no rule about tank tops except that the straps be at least 2 inches thick so we didn't anticipate any problem, especially considering girls at our school wore tank tops all the time. After the first day, the school announced that boys were no longer allowed to wear tank tops. When questioned as to why, they claimed that visible armpit hair was a distraction that inhibited learning. The following Tuesday, we all went to school wearing tank tops and sporting shaved armpits. TL. DR. School claims guys can't wear tank tops because armpit hair is distracting. Next day, half the senior guys show up in tank tops with shaved armpits. Whoa did your boss actually remember and recognize the exceptions to shirt tucking from the HR manual an impressive power. 
Given how much he liked enforcing that rule, I wouldn't be surprised if he had nightmares about the day the workforce discovered the Hawaiian loophole. At a former workplace, the dress code was changed. Men were no longer allowed to wear shorts. Women could wear skirts. I started wearing a kilt, because skirts were okay in the rule book. I would have just worn a regular skirt. Not work related, but school. In HS I wore a freecondoms.com t-shirt to school. I was called down to the principal's office after 3-4 hours. My cool teachers thought it was awesome in the AM classes, and was told I was promoting abhorrent behavior. I posited that I was in fact trying to prevent unwanted pregnancies. I lost my fight and was told I had to leave if I did not have another shirt. Rather than leaving I put a sticky note over the M in condoms and spent the rest of the day harassing faculty about fantastic lakeside condos that I was giving away for free. When Circuit City was still in business I worked in the warehouse. For whatever reason, they had a strict dress policy of khaki pants. This awful collar shirt that also had to be tucked in. This went for everyone. Even warehouse. Like Kazin 420, I discovered through an old warehouse employee guide, shoved in a drawer years ago and forgotten about, that as long as warehouse employees had khaki colored shorts, with no cargo pockets, and a t-shirt with a Circuit City logo there would be no problem. Circuit City stopped making Circuit City t-shirts long before I started, but thanks to a local Salvation Army, I was able to pick up two Circuit City t-shirts and a quick trip to Target for some shorts, and my new uniform was set. My mangers were not happy about my appearance, claiming I looked sloppy and unkempt. Even better, when the giant black dude, who hated his job, and just slept in the back, and talked on his cell phone all day, from the warehouse found out about this, he too had some old Circuit City t-shirts, and joined in. Management hated us working together. I miss Circuit City. Former Sea City employee here too. We never did the khaki shorts thing but we did use to wear old Fire Dog and other Sea City related t-shirts to work constantly. The management didn't like it but they couldn't stop it. I used to work at a lingerie store as an assistant manager so I had to dress nice and look professional. All the other girls wore huge heels and always ended up complaining about how sore their feet were at the end of their shift and I always wore flats to avoid having sore feet. They were still nice, stylish shoes, but they didn't have towering heels on them. My manager always used to get mad at me for not wearing heels and tried to claim it was part of the dress code. I looked it up and showed her that it didn't say anywhere that I had to wear heels. Just that I had to wear acceptable work attire or something like that and she tried to tell me it was an out of date dress code or something so I would tell her that she should get an updated one then. Eventually, she brought head office into the argument and the provincial manager was trying to tell me to wear heels to work. I told them they would have to pay me more than minimum wage to ruin my feet. I did not get a raise and no one ever told me to wear heels to work again. Heels cause more problems than just foot pain. Serious sacral hip issues and lower back problems can arise from the unnatural tilt forced by the raised heels. Heels are silly. At my old school, they had rules about hair length, guys, and our teacher got anal about it. The only actual rules were that they couldn't pass our eyebrows or collar area. Being the whitey douchebag I am, I used a crap ton of gel to slick up my hair and do obnoxious things with it. It was all raised, so it never crossed my eyebrows or collar. I got away with it for 2 months, until the principal changed the rules. All just for me. D. You could have also just shaved your eyebrows. I used to work at the Jaws ride at Universal Studios Florida. Our uniform consisted of a blue t-shirt, jeans or jean shorts, white socks, and white shoes. The unofficial dress code had all of us girls wearing jean shorts and white knee socks. One summer, I ended up working the Jaws ride and the Jungle Cruise at Walt Disney World simultaneously. I love Disney, and had always wanted to work there, but I ended up finding it stifling, with all sorts of silly and over the top rules. At the Jungle Cruise, you wear a khaki shirt, khaki shorts or pants, white socks, and brown shoes. One day, I didn't have any normal sized socks to wear to the Jungle Cruise, so I ended up wearing my white knee highs which looked ridiculous with the jungle costume. When I got to work, one of my managers flipped his crap, told me my socks weren't in compliance with the Disney look, 
the official policies on how to dress at Disney, and made me roll my socks down. It looked like I was wearing little white life preservers around my ankles, and looked more out of place than they looked originally. I was annoyed, so when I went home, I scoured my Disney look booklet for the policies pertaining to socks. All I could find was that socks had to be long enough to cover the ankle bone. There was no maximum height. Heck, I could have worn white tights under my khaki shorts if I really wanted to. The next day, I wore my knee highs again as a small act of rebellion. The same manager was there, and he flipped out. He actually pulled me into the office to write me up, but before he could get me to sign the paperwork, I pulled out my copy of the Disney look and showed him that, while incredibly silly looking, my socks were perfectly acceptable, and that I would continue wearing them like that. And so I did. I looked stupid, but I didn't care. Working for Disney wasn't a pleasant experience in my opinion, and it was very liberating to know that I could at least wear my socks however the heck I wanted to. It sounds to me like adventuring through the jungle, knee high socks is a good idea. Working at Big 5 there was a policy that men had to be clean shaven or have a mustache, no beards or goatees or starburns. I cannot wear a mustache without looking like either a PR-file or an 80s P-star, but I hate shaving every day, so I grew out the biggest, creepiest Hulk Hogan stash ever witnessed and wore it proudly for the entire time I worked there. His name is Alex. I work in food service. My job created a rule one day that one's hair cannot touch one's collar. I have rather long hair, but I always kept it in a braid and we wear hats, anyways. I was informed of this rule about 2 hours before the end of my shift, and told that I had to comply immediately because I was breaking health code. I politely informed them that no, I was not. This was a store policy, but I would be happy to come in with my hair up the next day. I didn't think this was unreasonable. It takes a while, not to mention Pins Hair Product ETC, to keep my hair up. Not good enough, now. So I punched out for a break. Bought rubber bands and floral wire, made 8 braids with the wire woven in, and stuck them in every direction. Boss saw me and began screaming. I calmly told him my hair wasn't touching my collar. TL. DR. Long hair not allowed to touch collar. Created obnoxious hairdo within regulations. Boss told me you have to cover X this upcoming weekend. Both days. Since everybody else said number I said how do you know I'll say yes he said you have to there's nobody left. I said, you're wrong. I'm left. But I quit. Now there's nobody left. He was speechless. His expression was priceless. I stood there about 10 seconds and said, I'm walking away now and left. Thank god this happened the day after I had secretly secured a better job. Probably one of my fondest memories. Not a job, but a school. I went to a Catholic college and they didn't allow members of the opposite sex to spend the night in a dorm room. I made a huge case that they were discriminating against heterosexuals, and that rule miraculously disappeared the next year. Praise Jesus and pass the lube. When I was in the army, I pulled my car up to an ATM machine on base to get cash. Four guys piled out leaving all doors open, while getting my cash. From somewhere behind me someone says you actually drive that freaking piece of crap. I should call in for a tow truck. Without bothering to turn around I yelled back frick you and your tow truck. I never did see who it was as he was gone by the time I had my money. Next day my squad leader calls me aside and asks me if I told SSGP to go frick himself yesterday. And I had to admit that yes, I probably had. So I was in trouble. I had three other witnesses who were interviewed and signed sworn statements to the fact that I had told a staff sergeant to go frick himself and a tow truck. I was given the opportunity to read the incriminating statements before I made my own. Just to point out that there was no point in lying. That was when I found out that only one guy had even known who it was because he was in civilian clothes, not on duty. So my statement detailed an aggressively profane and hostile person in civilian attire. Identity unknown to me whom I found to be acting irrationally, and attempted to defuse further confrontation by responding jovially in kind fashion. The beauty was without reading the other statements, I'd have been unable to mesh my version of events so perfectly with the bland facts the others reported. The key point is under the uniform code of military justice, 
There is no such thing as disrespecting a non-commissioned officer, only insubordination which is very clear about being in uniform. At this point everyone decided the best thing to do was to sweep it under the rug as SSGP had far more to lose than I did, and magically everything went away. P continued to be a dong to me at every opportunity, so I made it a point of yelling hey P frick you whenever I saw him out of uniform. Eventually my squad leader asked me to stop as a personal favor to him, so I did, but it was fun for a while. There's actually a lot more to the story, and I'm dying to tell it but didn't have time. And don't yet, I'm going to post the rest tomorrow about the rise and fall of SSGP, and the part I played. On the flip side, I'm the boss enforcing policy. When I took over the department, the old boss told me that the reason the place looked like crap was because when he asked a sales associate, base pay and commission, to clean or put up stock, they claimed it wasn't in their job description. The main boss backed them up calling it a technicality, I pulled out the description and read out other duties as assigned by the manager on the last line. 2 out of 9 quit. My department is now clean and stock is always up. Sales are consistently up. I'm cool with that. I've never understood not doing reasonable things at your job. Cleaning, making it presentable and comfortable for patrons. Stocking, is all part of sales. I worked at a PetSmart 5 or so years ago. In the pet hotel where animals were boarded while their pet parents, owners, went on vacation. Everything I did was in the back. No customers ever saw me. Just the dogs and kitties. But my bee boss would always get onto me for forgetting my belt. So one day she was particularly mad at me about not having a belt despite the fact that I was picking that shit up last minute for someone who was sick. I pick up a dog leash, put it through my belt loops, and say well. It appears I now have a belt. Well I wouldn't be taking any crap from the female dogs in my care. Similar to OP, but with a military swag to it. In the navy you must always have a white t-shirt under your uniform. I had a senior chief who constantly checked if your t-shirt was not visible and required that it be seen. I checked the uniform regs and found that while in a working uniform you can wear a v-neck tee. Started wearing them and he took notice as soon as he saw me. I told him that the regs allowed it, he scowled and his only comment was, one for the blue shirts and walked away, then he hammered me for every reg violation he could find. Smart asses never win, at least not in today's navy. Company dress code allows women to wear open toed shoes, so long as they are leather, the dress code does not allow men to do the same. A few years back, I started wearing leather sandals during the warmer months. A few managers mentioned to me that I was in violation of the dress code and I pointed out that my shoes would be considered acceptable if I were a woman and that it's gender discrimination to deny me the ability to wear something that is considered okay on someone of the other gender. Haven't heard any comments or problems since. This gender discrimination keeps coming up in this post, and it's absolutely true where I work too. Our dress code is pretty simple, collared shirt. Women never wear a collared shirt, ever. Men have to, or they'll be sent home. Wish I were freaking kidding. When I was working at an office max about 10 years ago, I was the only employee who didn't smoke. Needless to say, everyone in the building took a 15 minute smoke break 2-3 times a shift, and I got squat. One day, I asked the manager if I could have a clean air break, and he was confused. I explained that since smokers can have their 15 minutes breaks 2-3 times a shift, I should be able to step outside and do the same without having to smoke. Ecked my manager, but he knew he had to let me to avoid any discrimination. I know an ex-smoker who had to quit due to a rather tough fight with lung cancer, which he won. He would still go outside and take non-smoking breaks every 30 minutes or so. He was so used to going out for a smoke. He really couldn't sit for an hour without getting antsy. I admired him for taking the one good thing about smoking, a break, and applying it to his no longer smoking self. Not really my boss but my school principal, which was really like a boss to me as a kid. I was at an Opus DI school so the nuns were pretty freaking strict and I hated the freaking salads they gave us. I found multiple ways to hide the food because you can't throw food when there are millions of people starving until one day I just went with a tray half full to dump it all. The nun went ballistic and I just said I'm full. Gluttony is a sin and threw it all. That got me in trouble. I was 9. 
clarify, I have posted this story before in some similar thread. This isn't work related but happened at my old high school. I had a friend who was a year older than me, and he decided to do an experiment, but he wanted to see how short short shorts could be. He made his own jorts and every few days he would cut an inch or so off. It got to the point where he had to wear a speedo underneath otherwise people would have been able to see his balls. The only reason he stopped was because he was reported by a killjoy and told him to stop. Best experience ever, but the experiment was a success. He was testing to see if the dress code was sexist towards girls and he proved it. When I was in grade 4, pizza was sold at lunch for $1.50 a slice. I saw the business opportunity and went to the Little Caesars a stone's throw away from the school and bought 10 hot ready $5 pizzas and sold the slices for $1.00. 1.25 on Friday, when the school told me I couldn't sell pizza on school property, I moved my office to my aunt's house which was next door, so every day at lunch the kids would walk to the neighbor's front yard, buy pizza and come back to school, I was making a tidy sum every day. I went to a Pentecostal school even though I, nor my family were Pentecostal, they made me get haircuts all the time and I liked having long hair and sideburns. One day they gave me the ultimatum. I had to shave my sideburns, or they would do it. I then told the principal that I wanted a tattoo. I was told that I could not, because the school's rules were biblically based, and then she read Leviticus 19.28. Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. I told her to please read the verse above, which read, Do not cut the hair at the sides of your head or clip off the edges of your beard. I got to keep my sideburns. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.